Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go. I love it. I love the spirit already. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay. Thank you, Uluwa Tumishi Adjoke Emmanuel. Thank you for joining us. Let me know that you can hear me clearly. Type in the comment section if you can hear me clearly. Let me know. Can you hear me? 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 Let me know. Let me know. Let me know in the comment if you can hear me. Let me know in the comment if you can hear me. Let me know in the comment if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Awesome. Awesome. Ooh. This your name is a tongue twister. I'm going to try. Oh. <laughs> it's not a name. It's a sentence. The year of grace. <laughs> Thank you, Halima Muhammad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. I'm glad you can hear me. Let us do something while we're, you know, getting ready to bring on our guest. Let me know where you're connecting from. I know you're on Facebook, but what's your location right now? I am currently connecting from Dubai. It is 11 p.m. right now. So if I'm not like talking too loud that's because i don't want to wake up my neighbors all right so i'm from I'm, I'm currently connecting from dubai and it's 11 p.m tell me where are you connecting from let me know awesome the year of grace lagos nigeria a day a day a day from adoi kitty fantastic all right awesome 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 please also feel free to share this link right because you know what we're here right we're here to talk about her success story. And we have two beautiful guests that are going to be joining us here today to share their success story. And you know how the saying, success what has family. Success is what is attractive. So why are we doing this? Basically, we're doing this to share more references, to tell you that success is not exclusive to anyone. There are principles, there are things that you can put in place and you know, to be successful. And like the saying also goes that success leaves clues, right? So that means that there are things that some people have done to be successful. And when they share and you adapt and adopt it, there is every possibility that you are also going to, you know, lead to success or end up in success. And as you and I know, success is also relative. It is subjective because what success means to you at this time, as of today, officially 27th of May, 2023. What success means to you today might shift in three months time, might shift in six months time. Why? Because we are evolving beings. We evolve from time to time. And so what success means to each and every one of us is exclusive to us because what you are looking at, success at this point for you might just be having sanity peace of mind, being able to control your emotions. If you are able to get that, that might just be your own definition of success for now. For somebody, your success might be, I want my business to hit its first million, million naira, million dollars, million pounds, million, you know, whatever, euros. But that could be success for you. Success for you right now could be, I just want to settle down with my family have my husband grow a family, a godly family. That's like when you imagine what success looks like, that is what you see. So success is very, very relative, exactly, right? But again, is there are principles that guide success generally. And so when we have different individuals who share their stories, they help us see those pointers, those references, how they did it. And there are things that we can learn from them there are things that we can pick from them that we can adopt and adapt so that we can get to our own um, destinations as well. All right. So thank you so much for joining and thank you for letting me know where you're joining from. Pastor Vera says from the United States. Thank you so much for joining. I know it is afternoon now in the United States. So thank you. Good afternoon to you. Good evening to you if you're in Nigeria. 
right now the time should be about 8 p.m in nigeria good evening in the uk as well it should be about 7 p.m in the uk right now so welcome 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 depending on where you are joining from all right, I'm going to introduce myself and we're going to get into this conversation and I'll bring up our guests and we'll dive into the conversation. My name is Eiji Osakede, but I'm popularly known as the Energetic EJ. I help purpose-driven individuals start, grow, monetize their audio content, uh, specifically podcasts and audio books, all right? So I help people use their voices for impact, influence, and income. This is what I do, uh, amongst many other things. I'm an event host, I'm an author, I'm a podcaster myself, and I'm also an audiobooks creator, and I train other people to do the same thing. All right, so it's a pleasure to be your host today. Um, I'm just happy you know, to be partnering with Women of Rubies, bringing this amazing show to you. We have this once every month. Last month, it was hosted on Instagram. This month, we decided to bring it down to Facebook. Um, let's see which one we are able to get more engagement on. So if you want just to continue here on Facebook, like you prefer here, you better let us know in the comment section. Yes. Thank you so much, Pastor Vera. Thank you. Thank you. Halima is connecting from Kano. Awesome. You are welcome. Princess Teagold, thank you so much for your kind words. I appreciate you. Aloha from the United States, Jocelyn Ali Bear. Um, we are here, Gidiba. Thank you, Princess Teagold. Thank you so much. All right. So today, again, on the show, we are hosting two guests, two beautiful powerhouses. Um, I'm going to introduce the both of them now. I'm going to read their bio, their short bio for you because they are, they are true bio. Their real bio is pretty long. But we're going to read the abridged version, which some of you might have seen in our posts before now. And then I'm going to bring them on stage. At some point, it will be both uh, three of us at some point, but we could start with just two of us for now. Tonight, we're going to have somebody who is so dear to my heart, the sage. We call her the sage. She's fondly called the sage. She's a relationship alignment coach. This woman is dripping wisdom. All right. She's the founder of A Woman on Half USA. She's trained as a neuro linguistic practitioner and in emotional freedom techniques and is both a member of the Maxwell Leadership Team and the Forbes Coach Council. All right. This woman is a powerhouse. She serves as a communications trainer who trains professionals, leaders, professionals, leaders, and entrepreneurs in a quarterly mastermind called CLAP. Remember this, CLAP, which stands for Communicate Like a Pro. This woman drips wisdom. This woman is a powerhouse. This woman is my big sister all the way from the United States. And I'm super delighted to be having this conversation with her to share her success story with us. Of course, you should know that every success story comes with some challenges. And we're going to hear some that will ignite you tonight because she is also an igniter. She's a catalyst. She carry fire <laughs> like that. And, and our second guest, um, our second guest today is Madame Adefunke Adewomi Uluremi. She is the founder of Black Diamond Support Foundation, a nonprofit organization that is for the overall well being of vulnerable indigent children and women with a focus on their education. That is such a powerful thing because I feel like education is something that we really need to pay attention to nowadays, especially now. And so this work that Mrs. Adeomi is doing is very, very vital. She empowers them in skills acquisition, free healthcare, feeding, shelter, and their ability to speak and defend themselves against any form of abuse in our society with special focus on people living in the slum. This is so beautiful. She has a BED in guidance and counseling. So yes, you're going to be getting some guidance and counseling through this conversation today from the University of Adui Kitty and an MA International Relations and Strategic Studies from Bainui State University, Mahodi, with, with over 10 years of experience in administration and public relations. So tonight again, we're having Dr. Eden A. Onwonka and Mrs. Adeomi Adifunke Oluremi. They'll be here today to share some of their success stories with us. Who is ready? If you are ready for 
to hear their stories, please type in the comment section, ready. Let me, let me see you type. If you don't type, I'll just, I'll not bring them up. <laughs> Can't see anybody in the comment section. Where are my people? All 30 of you. Where are you? Where are you? Are you not ready for us? Please don't tell me you're not ready. Don't tell me you are not ready. Come on, ladies, gather here. Tell me you're ready. Let's kick up. Hey, hey. I see you, sir. I see you, Pastor Vera. I see you, Akindoye. I see you, Jocelyn. I see you, Halima. I see you, Mary Opayemi. Thank you. Thank you for saying ready. So please. When you say ready, I hope you have your pen and your paper. There are some things that will drop for you tonight that if you don't quickly scribble them down, you might forget. Mm -hmm. Don't trust your brain. I know you are sharp. I know you have very good retentive memory. But please, just have backup. <laughs> Make sure you back up your system and your phone. Just have backup. Get your pen and your, and your journal now. I'm giving you two minutes to do that. Get your pen and your journal and grab a bottle of water so that you are here with us, no distractions. Let us listen to this story. Let us draw life out of it. Let us draw lessons out of it already. So right now we're going to kick off this conversation. I am going to bring on board Dr. Eden. And as we go along, um, Mrs. Funke is going to join us. I know, look at oh, Queen Mother Day Funke. Everybody say, hey, Queen Mother Day Funke. Queen Mother Day Funke is coming. I think she has one small, um, uh, what's it called, traffic on the road, <laughs> on the internet road, but she's going to join us here. But right now, let us put our, let me, let me see you use an emoji. It could be clap, it could be drum, it could be fire, whatever. Just use emojis for me. Let me know you're ready. As I bring on Dr. Eden. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, guys. Yeah. Come on, ladies. <laughs> this is Ruben of Rubies. Come on, ladies. Where are your emojis? Where are the emojis? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I know there's a tiny lag between what I say and what you hear. So join, join, join. Let me let me see. Uh -huh. That's a very rough kind. Mm, I did not prepare gift to. You're supposed to be in the gift because I love how you are like on point. Awesome. Ah, Mr. Mr. This is at um uh, Mrs. Stephen Kerr, you should be backstage, not front stage. Um, let me talk to Dane Car to reach out to you. You should be backstage, not front stage. You are on Facebook. You should be backstage with me in the studio. Please um, talk to Dane Car. Right. Okay. So let's do that. And that means she's going to join us in a bit. Let's come to the back end, not front end. Thank you so much, ma'am. We'll be waiting for you backstage. But without further ado, I'm going to bring up on stage right now, Dr. Eden Onwonka. Hello, mama. Hey, EJ, how are you doing? Hi, thank you very much, Ma. How are Hello, you? Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Well done for, for the vigil you are pulling to. <laughs> for, <laughs> for the 11 p.m. vigil you are pulling to, to get this on, on the road. It has not been a small something. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Welcome so much. How is it? How are you today? How, I'm how very well. It's a, it's a sunny, peaceful Saturday and... Um, just taking the time to kind of rest, um, but this was very important. So I, and I also wanted to give a quick shout out to Esther Ijewere, um and the entire women of Ruby's crew as we even wait for Defunke. So good to, to be here. Yeah, fantastic. So I'm just trying to coordinate so that she's back here with us. Awesome. Okay, fantastic. Yes, multitasking. <laughs> okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Ma, for being here one more time. Um, I'm sure Green Mother is going to join us very soon. Somebody says, Green Mother, people of Ikiti are waiting to hear you talk. Oh. <laughs> 
That is so cute. That is so, so, so cute. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so let us dive in before we wait for uh, Mrs. Um, I don't got to join us, but while we're waiting, see, when you, when you, when you, I want to first of all ask you, like, what is your take on success? What does success mean to you? Um, so, hello, everyone. Again, I bring you greetings all the way from Houston, Texas, and happy Children's Day, first of all, Nigeria. Yay. Happy Children's Day to right. all the wonderful children of children of the world. I am a mom of three beautiful children, so I wanted to take the time to acknowledge that today is Children's Day. Success. What does success even mean? You know, reflecting on success, I realize that success is very multi-dimensional. Um, I strongly believe that there is not one route to success. Yeah. For me, when I think of success, I just think of this hydra head. I think of this hydra head that flows into multiple dimensions. So I, and there are many components of success. It might have one big tree trunk, but there are several layers and layers and branches. So um, for me personally, uh, there are many definitions. We have the dictionary definition. We have several quotes on success. But for me, success is multidimensional, depending on the season you are in and also depending on what your priority is in that season. So if it's a season that I'm seeking to maximize financial wealth, make more money, Success for me, the blueprint of success in that season will be numbers, will be seven figures, will be bank account balances. Do you understand? And that is important in every season, right? Because we need money to power different facets of vision. Mm -hmm. But if it's in a season that I'm just looking to bond better with my kids, sorry, my kids are going for their swimming, um, bond better with my kids then as much as money, sales, numbers will be important for me, time, connection with my kids will take precedence. If it is in a season like Serena Williams, one is trying for a baby, and because we are mostly for women, then success may be taking a step back from a thriving career. Success might just be just focusing on having a baby. Um, yeah. So I, I don't want my desire is for people to leave this place and in addition to whatever cultural, global, philosophical or industry definition of success, make their own definition. Yeah. Why is this very important to me and why should this be important to you? Without your own personalized unique understanding of success, you will be frustrated. <laughs> you will be in a season of building and you will feel you are doing nothing. You may be in a season of just stepping out of the limelight and you feel you're not doing anything. My success story is very simple. I have had a keen understanding of the different seasons of my life. Mm -hmm. And in those seasons, as a mom, as a wife, but more importantly, as a human being first, I've had to define in order to desire what success means for me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, 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 so good, guys. So, so ladies, let me tell you something that we're going to do as a practice here for this um, session. As, as our speakers are sharing, I tell you, they will be dropping nuggets. For some of you, if you're unable to grab your pen and your, uh, your journal right now, ensure you're typing out what drops for you in the comment section. That's one way that you're going to reiterate it. The moment you type it, you will remember it. And you can always come back to this video to see what you've typed. So you can use the comment section as your note right now so that you don't forget anything, all right? So please do that. Type whatever drops for you with a line, something that enters, say, hmm, power, drop it, okay? That's how we know you're following. Well, fantastic. Um, Queen Mother, Ade, Ade, Funke, Ade, Ramez in the building. 
I'm going to bring her up on stage as well now so that she can join the conversation. Mama, I hope you're ready for us. I hope the network is good. Hello, Ma, can you hear me? Your mic is muted. Okay, I think your network is a bit um, draggy. Your mic is muted, Ma. I need to unmute your mic. I don't know if I'm able to do that for you. Yeah, you need to unmute your mic. I click on the click on the mic icon and just click on it to unmute it. Okay, um, we still can't hear you yet. So, yes, it still needs to be unmuted. Your mic is yet to be unmuted. I hope you can see the mic icon. Um, yeah, sorry about the tech, but. We need you to unmute your mic, Ma, so that we can hear you. We okay. Can, you. can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes, 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 yes. Good evening. Good evening, Ma. You're welcome. How are you today? I can hear you. Oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? You might need to increase the volume on your phone, or if you have um, an earphone, you can connect it so... But also, I think your network is a bit wobbly because your video is breaking. Um, I'm going to connect hello. Then, no. Motor doing here. Hello? Okay. Yes, ma'am. No. Okay. Hear you. Good evening. Yes, good evening. Welcome. She's not talking. Oh, <laughs> I think it's network. We can hey, hear you. Okay, how are you doing? Can you hear me? Is she talking? Yes, yes, we can hear you loud here. and clear. We hear you loud and clear. I'm going to use two of my phones. So if you if you use two of your phones, there will be feedback. Yes, you can see there will be okay. Delays. Can you hear me now? I'm going to use my two phones. You won't be able to do that now. <laughs> okay, good evening. Okay, good evening. Okay, so I'm going to have to talk to Deinga to help me check that. Okay, so I think um, there's a network issue. Sorry about that. So uh, we're going to get her back on, on stage in a short while. But I love what you said about, <laughs> yeah, she's going to be back soon. I love what you said about, you know, success being you understanding your own journey per time and knowing what is important to you per time. Otherwise, you're going to live a stressful life because then you'll probably be running the race of somebody else when you're supposed to focus on your own race because again, success per time is relevant because like I said in the beginning, what is success to you right now will change in season because as you evolve as a human, as a woman, from time to time, the success, the definition of success for you which change. So thank you for that powerful, powerful uh, definition of success on your end. I'd like to ask you, I know we, we, we are having this session because we want you to share your success story. But I would like to say that when you now say, um, looking at the topic generally, to say sharing your success story, is a bit vague in a way because you're like, which of my success story should I share? <laughs> my success story as a wife or as a mom or as a coach or as a, as a minister, which of my success story do you want me to share? And so because of that, I'm like, hmm. So the truth is we know you are one person and you have these dimensions of you and the totality of your dimensions is what we can see and say this person is a success because it's somewhat an all round thinking. So my question, my first opening question to you would then be, when you say share your success story, 
if you were to correct it and say, mm -mm, you can't tell me to share my success story because I am multidimensional. How would you put it? I am, you are the sage, you are the communicator. I am curious. <laughs> So, you know what? I, I, I like how your mind works. I like how you think. I think in the last six, nine months, one of my greatest compliments is to tell people I like how your mind works. I like how you think. When I actually saw her success story, my first um, inclination was, ah, this is a little broad. But you know what? I like it because it, it allows us to move from broad to specific, right? Mm. So, I mean, I was, and a, a part of me was like, success, am I even qualified like which then I, I had to catch myself and say uh, if you think that way that means you are actually seeing yourself with the lens of success that might just be career or financial or numbers now if you think the way I now modified it because I had to understand it first and apply it and actually reflect on it so that I can actually hopefully inspire someone here to take it and run. So when I said her success story, I said, ah, 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 wait, 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 Eden, you are successful. And before someone says, ah, ah, now, wow, eh, look at that, they are praising themselves. Hold on, please, no judgment yet. I have to say, Eden, you are successful, so you are qualified to share your success story. Because success, again, is not one way. Success is not one way. For me, EJ, and for any man or woman listening, when I now thought about her success story, the first thing I thought were, of course, you know, when I say first, I'm usually like jam question. I usually have A, B, and C. <laughs> So I thought of one arm and the second arm. I just said, okay, if I were to abridge everything I do into bite size that people can remember, it would be CAC, not the church. It would be CAC. Hmm. And that would be coach, advocate, consultant. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Then on the other hand, if I was now to define success as it ties to the three things that I am known for, that I do and I love, and by God's grace, I've done excellently well over the past 10 years for coaching, 14 years for advocacy, and 20 years as a consultant. Okay. I now went to this other side and said, even what is success? And I said, number one, flexibility. Hmm. Wait, hold on. We are going somewhere. Number two, choice. Hmm. Number three, transcendence. And number four fulfillment as a coach my success story is that i could take an industry that was largely untapped that i at the beginning we didn't see anyone say what do you want to be in future i want to be a coach that was not what we said take something that was very fluid especially among sub-Saharan Africa that was relatively new, coaching as we now know it was pioneered by one of my mentors, Dr. Lanry Olushola, 20 something years ago, but even I didn't know him then. Yeah. To just take this desire that I had from when I was a little girl into my adolescence, into my twenties, that just desire to always encourage people. I just wanted to always encourage people. So I found that the more I encouraged people, they came to me. So it didn't start as, as coaching. It started as, ah, what can I say to this person to bring a little bit more perspective to their struggle? What can I say to this person to make them a little bit more grateful? What can I say to this person to give them clarity and many times help them collectively, me and the person brainstorming, find a solution? So I saw people leave my presence in after a gisting with me and say, ah, I know what to do now. Gisting with me, say, ah. I'm seeing myself in a way I never saw myself gisting with me and say, you know, the problem doesn't look half as bad now that either me and you damned it. Or just going and just said, I believe I can fly, even though they came into the conversation feeling rejected.
Mm-hmm. And it ties to a scripture, again, you will hear me quote scripture because I'm a person of faith, faith. respectfully. It ties to what I stumbled in the Bible at the age of 17. And it seemed like this was a love letter from heaven. I saw Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4. I have given you, I didn't say you, I put my name, Eden. I have given you the tongue of the learned to speak a word in season to them that are weary. Ah, so at that time I said, am I going to be a lawyer speaking a word in season? So I started scanning through, you know, um, careers that involved words. I thought it was mass comm lawyer. But after years of evolving, I now moved from an encourager into a coach. After I'd done this off the record, off the grid, for a long time, I just said, there's opportunity here. Because you know why, EJ? I was in a season in my life and people who I considered more successful were calling me for advice. Aha! Hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm like, wait, 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 wait. What's so going then, on here? Yeah, I said, okay, there's something here. I finished school in Boston, Massachusetts, and didn't get a job uh, immediately. And those, my um, classmates that had gotten a job, what I desired to do, were calling me to still unravel, unbox, clarify areas of their lives. So I said, you know what, there is more to life. So I said, but you know what? Can I continue? Because as much as I love it, how do I justify all the volume of time I give to it? And before I knew it, I said, you know what? We could turn this into something very compact, very structured. But how do I go about it? At that season in my life, which was about eight years ago or nine, I said, nobody might take me seriously. They'll be like, I then this advice you are giving you, you want me to pay for it. Ah, ah. So I leveraged on something in the transition from free to fee. I leveraged on a known brand at the time, which was John Maxwell. I was probably one of the third sets that got certified because I said, wait, someone, you know, EJ said, success has references. Everything you are struggling to do is because you have not found a reference. There is actually nothing new under the sun. It might be new in your dispensation, but it might have happened in the 18th century. If you dig deep, if you research, you might have seen someone that may have done it and you can build on it. So at that time, I saw someone who represented what I was designed to work into in coaching. Coaching for me was not a training. It was a calling, Isaiah 50 verse 4 to bring encouragement, to bring clarity, to bring perspective, to bring a mind shift to people who are in a funk. But I knew that calling without training is the easiest way to frustrate children because there are many hey. people who are called but who are not trained. Hey, hey, guys, many guys, people guys. who are trained <laughs> who are not Wait, called. wait, wait, mama, wait, 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 wait. Guys, write that down. Calling without training will lead to frustration. Write it down. Write it down. While we do that quickly, let me bring back um, Mrs. Dave from Kadeomi. She's back in the studio. Um, let's hope that the network is better this time. Hello, Mark. Can you hear me now? Your mic is muted still. <laughs> good evening. Yay! Good evening, Ma. <laughs> good evening. How are you doing? Fine, thank you, Ma. Welcome, welcome. I got so overwhelmed. Hey, uh, Madam Eden. You were really giving me some vibes, and I was like, why would they bring me and you together for this show? I should be listening to you. Like, no, you're giving almost all the things that I wanted to talk about. I was like, let me start writing. I'm already looking for my paper, for my bio. Yes, good evening. (laughs) See you. You look amazing. Nice being under your tutelage. Thank you. you. Thank you. My daughter made me up this thing because I was I was a little bit down. And one of the Aww. things I wanted to tell everybody right here, right now, is that do not joke with your health at all. Yeah. Do not joke with your health. I normally do um yearly checkup towards my birthday. I would just go to a good lab and um, and I would just do all my checkups. And Thank God I went four days ago. I may not have been here listening to you. Wow. I was having extreme low potassium that could have led to an heart attack for me. Mm-hmm. So 
Yes, I think I want to share that for, with people that no matter how successful you are, if you do not have a good health, you may not achieve anything. So your health is key. Mm. So this evening, yes, nice joining you two amazing women. Wow. Nice, like, I'm so humbled much. to be here. I'm very really yeah. humbled to be here. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Thank, thank you so much, Ma. We're glad that you are yeah. here. We are glad, and thank you for that opening as well to let us know that, see, your health. Health is wealth eventually. Ultimately, health is wealth. Do not joke with your health. Do not joke with your health at all, at all, at all, at all, at all, at all, at all. All right? So, yeah, fantastic. So, yes, welcome, Mr. Sade Funke. Don't mind me. I'm trying to see which of you these things fit better. Thank you for coming. Before yeah, and I, I'm, I'm not please. I'm Miss Adefunke, the Ms. one that you dashed me husband. In this, in this show, I don't understand. I don't understand. Girl, she had to do it. I'm Miss. You are not going to admit her bow has not found her. I read me, see, me, see, me, see, I like hey, this woman. Because Who dashed me all bad now? Goals, because there might be that gentleman. You here. understand. If you you understand. Be, you need to be proactive. Mm -hmm. uh, you want please. A like her. We are in 2020. We're like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, oh my God. I love this woman, but she's married. I'm not. I'm Miss For the record, she's single. And she's Fantastic. significant. Very single. And significant. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. I'm loving this. Thank you. This. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the correction. Okay. Correction accepted. Let You're me welcome. quickly ask you as You're we welcome. go in this conversation. Now we're talking about success. And you know, before you came on, I already asked Dr. Eden what success means to her. I would love to, you know, have your take on that same topic. When you hear the word success, okay, um, what does it mean to you? What, does it, what it means to me is rising up several failures. Rising up after several failures. You know, when a child, I don't see a child like, um, I see success more of, you need to have failed before you are successful. Because with that, you are able to learn the good and the bad, the reading, the falling, the steps, what you take long, so what you took wrong, so that when you're successful, the success can be more definite and permanent. But if you just go about maybe your four steps, you got it all right. You might think, oh, that is how it is. You don't learn some lessons. For me, I was, I had, I had gone through every, every phase of failure that a woman can go through. I have gone through every, I don't know, is it from childhood? But I have always had it in my mind that I will never allow myself to admit a failure. So at every stage I fail, it's like a motivation for me that there is a success coming and I just need to learn from the failure. So I, 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 I've never really given myself like, oh, I do this, I fail from it. I see it like, oh, I think it's even better I had a first fail. Because if I had it all going, I may not be able to manage the success when it comes and value it. So maybe that maybe because of how I was coming from from everything about my life, like me understanding abuse and extending that as a vocal point to become a success story in the area of bringing a lot of abused women into their freedom. I see my own story of failure as a success of other people. I don't think you're getting my grammar. Wow. Are you are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah, so totally. I see that wherever wherever I have failed, 
it is for me to inspire other people it is for me to think about why this thing happened to me and to learn from it to train in it to develop myself so that when the success of it comes through adequate training adequate discipline adequate focus you will not be able to manage the sources and same when it comes so you need to learn i used to tell people that when you're successful in something that is not actual success it's just like a word like oh i passed my exams what did you do to pass those exams what are the lessons you learn in it so that by the time you get an a bigger exam because life is all about examination life is all about life is all about growing by the time you say oh i have grown to a particular level i don't need to i don't need to learn again that is the beginning of your failure mm -hmm. so every day of our lives we need to continue to learn we need to continue to revalidate ourselves revalue ourselves and never be comfortable at where we are because the moment you get comfortable where you are, you are beginning to fail. It is as mm. convenient as that. Mm. Because there is a lot of people coming behind you. Your success stories today might be outdated in the next one or two hours or two days. And you just be looking at yourself, oh, I thought I was successful. I thought I had this. But you just see somebody achieving times 10 of what you think you've achieved. Mm. So you need to keep on revaluing on yourself. Keep relearning, re reprocessing. Mm. Like you need mm. to continue to, to explain, to understand who you are. Mm. And there's a lot Before. of, because we are human, because we are, because we are human, we tend to, we, we cannot be perfect. And because mm. we cannot be perfect, then the relearning process must continue. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you cannot and be perfect. You might just be like, oh, I've gotten everything right. I have my children. I have everything. My social story. I did this. I did that. Okay, now let me share something with you. Um, last year, I have my foundation. My foundation is um, close to 12 years. Mm -hmm. And we have done so, we have done a lot. Like, I always tell myself that if I did not know this, I would have been like, oh, Funke, you know, you've done so well. You have, you've, you've taken um, free medicals to the slums. You fed 5,000 children during Christmas. You've shared 3,000 school bags to the slums. You've had accommodation for over 200 women, domestic abuse women and all of that. Oh, you are successful. So there was a part that I relaxed back. And... I just realized that everything I thought was my own success story, which is actually like a personal thing for me, was actually the tips of an iceberg for some people. So that means that in every area of your life, there is always someone that you should always pray to attain to. I'm not saying you should, you should force yourself, but mm -hmm. at least always be, always get ready. Be hunger for more success. Be, be, be tested to be better than who you are yesterday. And when we were like talking, like, oh, okay, I think I want to go to all women program. And we started on Masca Truth. On Masca Truth is just like a women program that we come together. We want to, women to be able, well, I'm tired of Facebook groups that they will just be gisting and gossiping. I wanted mm -hmm. a deliberate group that is about the development of women. It's about the development of other people. And we started, and we, before two years, we were able to achieve an all-female-owned estate by women in Africa. Mm. Under two years. And they were like, amazing. oh, for years. Oh, for years, you've achieved so much. I'm like, no. This, could be, this is a success story of me. But the moment I stop at that, be rest assured that somebody will come out there and just build a whole state. And they'll be mm. like, okay, if you had grown yourself, it could have been your success story. But what I just noticed is that most women, the moment they achieve something small, they tend to go back and they start like, oh, yes, I've done. No, oh, mommy, I have done this, I have done that. Mm. No, it is mm. not like that. You mm. need to continually to grow.
Absolutely. Continually grow, continually learning, continually mm. to rediscover yourself. Drop the things, value yourself, retrain yourself, go for certification, go for, you know, there's a lot you can do. Absolutely. So that your success story can be retained. Mm. So that you will not be outdated. So, so, so Ma, if I hear I think you, that if I hear just, you clearly, yes, fantastic. If I hear you clearly, like this is what a summary of what you've said, is to say that success is continuous learning. Success is continuous yes. reinvention of yourself. Success is continuous mm -hmm. evolving of yourself and never settling for the comfortable. That is what success means. Be sure. Breaking your own record yeah. continuously. You know, and I think it's really yes. beautiful. However, however, how do you, um, how do you draw the line between consistently reinventing yourself and comparing yourself with others, benchmarking okay, now, yourself with others? Now, where do you draw the line? Yeah, my okay. This the funny thing about life is that you need to be contented with who you are. Hmm. But when you are contented with who you are, and you know the worth of who you are, you should know that the level that you are is actually the least of where you can ever be. Can be somebody like me. I do not compare myself with anybody. I don't even believe anybody is me because I am so um, peculiar in the way I think. I am very, very weird in my thinking. So for me to compare myself is like I am on the shadowy who I am. I believe so much in mm. me, which is one of the success tips I tell people. You need to believe so much in you that you will be so proud of yourself, even with the little you have achieved. However, the little you have achieved can actually be multiplied to plenty within mm. you. There was a time I stopped my, my humanitarian for a whole year because I was overwhelmed, I was tired, I was, I was drained. Mm. And I just stopped. I just, I, just, I just moved back. Like, no, okay? No, you just have to move back. If right. I was comparing myself with other people, I would have still be forcing myself. I, I would just be going and going and going. And it will lead me to failure. When you mm -hmm. compare yourself with other people and you don't know the yardstick of where they are coming from, you are not under their mentorship, you are not under their tutelage for you to be guided, but you just see them out there and you're like, oh, I want to be like this person. You are doomed to failure. You need to mm -hmm. understand your own strength. You need to understand your own weaknesses. You need to understand your own capability. You need to understand where to stop and when to move. Mm. That was what I did on me. So, so it is not even right for you to compare yourself. It's not even a, there's, no, there's no reason for you to put a benchmark or for a line on it. You is you. If mm. your success story is going to end on base one, be proud of it and own it. But at the end of the day, always tell yourself that you can do better. You can be better and you can achieve more. It is you mm. telling yourself. It is not because you are saying be getting it. But you are just telling yourself that, no, I don't want to stop here. I want to go further. I want to be better than what I have achieved last year. Already. I think I can do more. I think I can go further. So it's just all about you. And when yeah. I stopped uh, for that one year, everybody was wondering. I did not even do our popular project 5,000. And I'm like, yes, I need to stop. Most of the other organizations were still going on and all my volunteers were like, oh, uh, and these people were like, they are not us. Yeah, if they want to go on, they can go on. We are not, we are not there. 
<laughs> we are not them. I know my capability. I know I know Absolutely. my strength. My strength can be their own weaknesses. Their mm. weaknesses can be my own strength. So I will be doing myself a really, really bad thing Disservice. if I compare myself with somebody. This service, I for somebody that is a total different personality with mine mm. that I don't even know how she is getting it done. So mm -hmm. I don't, it's good to know I keep telling people. One of the things I also don't do is that I don't make, I don't, I don't have friends. That's one of the secrets of my success story. I don't have people telling me things that is going to mess up my head. Mm. You guard I your space. My, I guard my space. There is a lot of boundaries. My mm. mental health is important to me. Absolutely. That's one of the things somebody can be successful. Mm. If you're hearing this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that, you'll be so confused. Confused that you don't even know what to do, where to pick from, and where to go. But if you are yourself, judge, lawyer, prosecutor, you talk to yourself, you listen to yourself, you ask yourself, can you go on? Can you stop? Do you think you can do this? Okay, I think you can do it. Yeah, let us do it. Then when it's time for you to rest, you rest. Even if the whole world is clamoring, why are you resting? It is none of your business. Hmm, I love that. I love that. It, it reminds me of what uh, one of my coaches said, Coach TDK, that you have to get to the university of you. Like you need to understand you so much so that you are super aware of what is going on in out and around you at all times because that is what will yeah. guide you in your journey coach eden i would like to ask you following with, with, with this trajectory of the conversation is to say that what then keeps you going what is that thing that you would say keeps you going in the way that it keeps you maintaining your relevance or also not over pushing like like uh, uh, miss stephen k is talking about right now but that thing that just keeps you going to know that uh -uh, i am doing okay like i am making progress but there is more you know there is more what keeps you going and at, is there any point that you get to that you feel like okay it's all right stop <laughs> I, 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 I think um, Dave Funke has raised several important things that are mm. very, also that are sentiments that I share, mental health, um, prioritization. I put it this way. I said you must know your sanity limits. That's how I put it. Uh, your sanity limit is not my sanity limit. So mm. you must know where to draw that line. The second thing she has raised that oh. I share is boundaries. I am a mm. big believer in defining, defining, continuously evolving your boundaries. The third thing is, I, I, I believe, is in no comparison. So she has raised a couple of very important points. Um, I, in answering that question, I want to tie back to the um, first, um, what I was saying. I said, on one hand, what keeps me going? I think it's an understanding of what I bring to the table. And I defined mm. it as CAC. So the coaching is a calling that evolved from Isaiah 50 verse 4. So that simply means that I have a blueprint, that my blueprint is I've called, God has called me to you know, speak a word in season to them that are weary. Why is this important? Because I always go back to the assignment giver to clarify the assignment. Because my desire, my calling is to speak words of season. You will never hear me spewing negativity on social media. The calling... Mm -hmm gives you the conduct. The calling defines your character template. And there's mm. nothing wrong with, um, you know, social commentator or those that are controversial. That's not my blueprint. I'm a healer by calling of my mm. coaches. But I have to go and train. So when, when people will say, coach, you don't com comment on this, comment on that, I will respectfully say, I am called to coach, to heal people. I'm not called to be a social <laughs> commentator. Commentate. So that is what makes me know when to start, when to stop. No, yeah. there are many things I'm constrained by the parameters of my calling and calling. training Ooh. to not do. There are many posts I've said in my head that will never see the light of day because I am called to encourage people. Mm. So see, 
Then number two, the A, the advocacy. As long as I've known myself, I was an advocate. My mom says that growing up in Nigeria, when we were driving through those uh, mile two road, I would see those Arab kids and I would say to her, why can't we every day, my mom would give them money. I one day I said, you give them money every day. Why can't we just take one of them home? <laughs> and my mom said, that's not how it works. <laughs> So I've always wanted to make a difference and help people. Yeah, when I was in, in university, there was a blind guy. I have many examples, but I would shop and literally surprise classmates in their homes when I heard that they were struggling. I remember mm. this blind guy, his name is Armstrong. Wherever you are, God bless you. I haven't seen him for over 20 something years. They call me Yahoo Armstrong. You know why? Because People were not coming close to him. And I told my dad, yes, this guy, my dad brought shirts. I changed his wardrobe. But I said to myself, anytime I see him wearing dirty clothes, I found out where he lived in the innermost part of Yigondo. I mm. went there because I had an allowance from my parents. And I called the captain and we furnished his house. So people were dancing, thinking I was... It was a new wife. No, it was just the desire to put myself sometimes at risk and having no boundaries to make a difference. So mm. the advocacy continued and I started supporting widows in Adopt a Widow. And when I saw someone was doing it, I now started supporting them undercover by making a huge contribution to widow outlets. You see, then it morphed the same advocacy. The advocacy morphed when, surprisingly, in 2017 and 2022, yeah. I was diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. So I decided, you know what, I have a choice to be private about yeah. my But again, I say it this way. The power of advocacy for me would always overshadow the desire for uh, 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 privacy. So mm. advocacy or privacy. I didn't choose cancer awareness. It chose me. So what did I start doing? Telling my story so that people will see that someone like them survived. Mm, and they not an fight. Old, year old woman, not a 50 something year old mother, but someone who was in her late 30s and got diagnosed. I could liberate people in Africa, different parts of the world, from mm. the shamification of a cancer, because breast cancer, cancer. journey. Mm. So now it's moved into this big movement, as you are aware, where I always say we decided to turn our survival into a revival. Hmm. Because the only time people hear about cancer is when someone is dehumanized. When we yeah. are spreading their picture on social media, begging for money, and I wanted them to say, you can survive. Some will die. We will love them. Hmm. But some will leave. And I made people come out of the woodworks to have courageous conversations about what to do, what not to do, how to survive, how not to survive, and choosing themselves. That's the hmm. thing. So you see coaching advocacy, then the consulting. The consulting is just my training. And that's meaning that you can be everything. That's why I like what Dave Funke said. I always say to people, joking, if you are in my close circle, I'm not under any pressure to perform. Mm. Like I'm, I'm not, someone is not saying you must go. You must be there. I know my husband is such a good God man. I speak that into your life, different mm. That you have yeah. a good, good, good God. God. I love that. Not food, but God. Not just God. Food, so the combination. Good God. Yes, Ooh. I speak that into your life, each and every one who desires. So I'm not Amen. under any pressure to perform. If I say to a day that what I want to just be is cooking children, homemaker, my nobody will bother me. But I know there is more. Mm. It is the sense that I'm, I wasn't given one talent. If you have one talent, maximize Good it. Good for it's you. That I didn't have two. I didn't have three that I had like four or five and I had to maximize them. So the consulting speaks to my corporate career from when mm. I started from Shell and worked with inter British International School and started traveling around the world and moved to banking and now as a consultant with Bank of America. Why am I sharing this? Knowing who you are Knowing the mandate on your life will let you know when to start and when to stop. stop. And when to morph. And when to morph. Ooh. And I love what Funke said. And knowing again, success for me is significant in seasons. Mm. Someone please write that down. Significant served in seasons. Significant served in seasons. 
There was a season from when I worked in Shell and I didn't get a job for two years. You know what I did? I volunteered in church. And that grounded me in discipleship and formed the framework of my spirituality that I didn't know I would need now. Significant served in seasons. But that knowing there is more was what brought me to the United States. Even though I had what someone can say, your life is okay. But I had a burning that knew that this is not all there is to me. I oh, desire to school abroad. Now, it was that schooling abroad that finally brought me to Boston, Massachusetts. And finally, I married. Significant served in seasons. Knowing that every experience, every rejection... Mm. Every delay is leading up to nobody wants theoretical mm. leaders. Nobody wants theoretical inspirers. Probably the success of Defunke is that they can touch, they can taste, they can tangify how her authentic failure has morphed into what she does. Mm. Usi Tembe Kwayo said, I am done listening to people who have not failed. What do they know? <laughs> I do not want a marriage coach who hasn't failed in relationships. I do not mm. want a business person who hasn't had a litany of failed business ideas. Yes, yes, our yes. story and our success story Ooh. is just that in coaching, in advocacy, in consulting, I have had moments where I had to learn unlearn, start again, stop, and just have a sense that my journey is mine. Mm. When I got married, this lady you're looking at, I was a homemaker for two years because I was having my first child, so I took a gap from career. It's okay. That's why I said for me, my success principles are flexibility, choice, impact and transcendence the ability to look at where you are and say you know what i can step back now i can refuel i can evolve i can change i can do so i've had that opportunity having the opportunity where i was never a slave to money has been my greatest success story Ooh. where i didn't have to choose money over my health Mm. Yeah, I didn't feel the compulsion to just keep going at the rat race when I could retreat. So 2017, I took an entire year for medical treatment. 2022, I made a decision to take the year off and named it a wellness year. And we still did several important things. We did the Woman and Half Commit that had almost 4,000 virtual delegates. You were a part of it. We still launched the Man and Half book of affirmations. We still have three masterminds and I traveled to four countries speaking and teaching but knowing that i am not bound to any blueprint i can step out as a consultant if my current season necessitates that i redefine success i'll pass it back to you Ooh, so good i just can't tell you know wow so good so good so 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 good i mean both of you have just, it feels, it, feels, it feels like we just scratched the surface of your success stories. And I am just like blown away by the amount of work that you've put into what you have done. Now, here listening or watching um, this and those who are still going to watch later on are of different age groups. So, you know, um, people that will watch this later or that are connected right now. What would be your word for the women who are going to watch this, whether they are here right now or they're going to watch this later, to say, okay. success um, you is know, the thing that we should look out for, right? Success is the thing that we should look out for, that we should aim for. Everybody, nobody sets out on a journey to fail. Like, ah, I am going to fail because I want to become a success. So we all try to succeed. And then sometimes we fail and then we try again until we hit success. What would your word be for them to keep them going until they hit that place and continuously repeat okay. it? So you can go first, Mr. Defunke, and Ms. Ms. Defunke, and then um, Coach Eden. All right, okay, thank you. Um, when uh, Coach Eden was talking and uh, she was like, oh, she had a colleague, I wanted to go to that side. Um, some of us, as I said, it's good to know who you are. 
I became very, very vocal on social media because I was trying to build myself up from an abuse. I was trying to tell my abuser that I have a voice. I was, I was putting up a facade of um, now she can talk, she's bold, she's no more timid, she's no more this, she's no more that. But if anybody follows that kind of full step, they might be shooting themselves on the leg because I have the reason of become so vocal because I was I was fearful, thinking my abuser might come. So I wanted to use my baby like whatever he sees, he would think that is who I am for a period of time. Then and I became an expert in vocal violence and all that. So if somebody like Coach Ida comes to my world and she just like. That 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 noisy girl, but you don't know my background. No, I'm so I'm, that I'm, comes, I'm noisy too. So I mean, that makes two. <laughs> yes. So I'm just trying to say what you are saying. I'm just trying to say what we are saying that you need to understand who you are and not follow other people's personality to develop your own success story. My own success story is because of my past, my experiences, my personality, my strength, my weaknesses. And I try as much as possible to, ex to express myself in such a way that end up giving me joy, contentment, and happiness. Like every, every, every vulnerable domestic violence woman that we save gives me joy. Every child that goes to school gives me joy. Every, but not everybody has the grace to do that. Not everybody is called to do it. So if you follow me like, oh, because people are calling for care, people for care is getting popular, and you want to venture into what I am venturing, you may not have the grace to carry it out. And if you don't have the grace to carry it out, you will tend to fail. So the first thing I'm going to tell people is discover who you are. Who are you, by the way? Who, what, what, what gives you, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your, what are your goals in life? What are your inherent skills that you know that if you share this with the world, it's going to add to you and it's also going to benefit. There is no success story that does not have to do with humanity. We all have a purpose to save humanity. So if your success story is not saving humanity, either directly or indirectly, that's a success. It has to serve humanity. It's been created for that. So there is nothing that can give you inherent joy, inherent happiness or peace of mind if you are not directly or indirectly affecting the society. It, it's not about you getting all the old stuff in the life, but what are you doing extraordinarily? What are you doing for people? What are you, what, what are your, what are, are is the story even going to inspire other people to be successful? Is your is story going to make other people rise from their failure and want to try again? That was why I started from that because when I saw the topic, success story, I wrote on my wall that, hey, this was still, I'm not yet successful yet. I just want to come here and cash crews and let us share our stuff. That is trying to encourage people. That is trying to make people feel like, oh, if this woman at this stage says she's not yet successful, that means that, oh, we need to really do It's just a way to encourage and motivate other people. The three of us here are not yet successful, so we don't have the success to be because we are still living. Only when we die, that is where they can say they want to tell our success story. We can wake up tomorrow morning and boom, God is calling us to another greater purpose that is going to be higher than what people think we have achieved now. That what we have done now may not even be, it may not even be near or tenable to what is called success of the new we that we have become. So one of the things is that you need to discover you. You don't need to, you don't need to be like, oh, because of this, I want to do this. Just make yourself you. If you're making yourself, if, if it's just for you to do the least you can do, and you are happy with it, you have your success story already. Your happiness, your happiness is equated to your success story. 
So far, you are not hungry. You are no longer thirsty to achieve more. You are already okay where you are. And you are already feel like, oh, yes, I have achieved. I am fulfilled. I have done my bit. I have done. I, have, I want to achieve this and I have achieved it. And you are happy within you. You are a success already. Even if your friend has gone 10 steps higher than her, that is her own calling. It is not your own calling. You are not created upon the same day. So for everyone that we come back here to listen to this, you have your own success story in you. All we are just asking you to do is try to look inwards to see if you can become better. But if what you have now is your fulfillment, then pass on it. If you're on it, PR on it, make noise about it and be happy. Be proud of yourself. Be proud of yourself. The first time I, the first time we served hundred children food, I, I, I posted it on Facebook more than ten times. I was <laughs> repeating the pictures of the children because that was my periodical success story. We mm -hmm. all have our busy success story. We all have it. Every season of our life comes with a success story. Absolutely. So at that particular stage, bask on it. Mm -hmm. Be proud of yourself. Absolutely. But another thing we are telling you is this. If you are yearning for more, you need to relearn. You need to rediscover. You need to look back and see where you've gone wrong or what you have done right. You need to also be under mentorship if need be. You also need to be very, very conscious of times and season. Mm. Times and season matter most in success. You can actually miss a real goal of your life if you are in the wrong place at the right time. Mm -hmm. So you need to really understand time and season. Where are you supposed to be? What are you supposed to do? Who mm -hmm. are your friends? Mm -hmm. what, can, what, what are your friends the kind of people that does not match up with what you have in your head? Then you need to change your circle. You need to change who you are. But if the friends are the kind of your line of success, if your, if your success story is that I have gone for 100 uh, parties in a year, then you just need to make friends with people that buy Ashwabi every week. Those are your, that's your own. I, don't, I validate everybody's story and everybody's goal. I will not say one is good, one is bad. That is their strength and their weaknesses. But if your goal is that you want to read, you want to study more, then you need to move away from the noise and from the crowd mm. and go into the cycle of where you know that you will be helped to achieve your goals and you mm. can also have your own success story. I did it for two to three years. I changed my total circle of friends because they were not helping me to achieve what I want to achieve. Them, <laughs> I gradually drop out of all the WhatsApp groups, and I just decided, like, okay, now it's true. It's true now. When we are in a WhatsApp group, and the only thing they are talking about is it's not just... what is in you. What is it? You need to, you need to cut it. You need to say that if you don't discover yourself, you will always be in the wrong place. Mm. Meanwhile, your inner self wants a better place. But because you have not rediscovered yourself, yeah. because you are you will always not achieve anything. So one of the things I did at that particular time, everything they were saying, you know, I was hungry, like I said, and God factor was there for me. You know, when the Holy Spirit was keep ministering to me, that for okay, no, this is not where I want it to be. Mm. I just said that anytime I am there, I am always depressed in that their suffering. Because they are not saying what I want to hear. They are not helping me. And I moved away. I tried to create friends. Some, one of them was Esther Jewere. I tried to move closer to Esther. And we became friends. And she was also into advocacy. And was also into similar thing of what I was doing. And I was learning from her, from afar. And, from, and I was able to have my own success story towards that. Hmm. so what i'm saying is that you need to also know where you are if you don't rediscover yourself you will always be at the wrong place you need to continually to learn you hmm. need to continually to have a book of okay what have i done what am i what 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 that what i do every three three months 
like okay what what is what what can i say i have done now that is right what are the things i have done wrong then of course restitution now we always yes, do yes. um this thing every time every three three months some of them we break it too, but we say we, are, we always fall we always rise but god is always with us so what i'm saying is that every one of us here that we inspire thousands of women they also need to know that we do not have it all laid out. Mm. We have fallen several times. We are also a we are also a broken pot in the potter's hand, being mended gradually. We are not yet the beautiful best verse in the potter's hands. But where the potter has molded us to, we are proud of ourselves and we no, know so that the, we are still a work in progress. Thank mm. you so much. Fantastic, awesome, 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 awesome submission there. Thank you so very much. Coach Eden, please share yours and then we'll wrap this up. So, uh, the brilliant, very brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much, Difunke. Let me just crystallize uh, and build on what she said because, I mean, that's, that's exactly my, my sentiment. We are all wounded healers. Hmm. We are all lonely connectors. We are all clay carrying the glory of God. Mm. If I were to say something to maybe a younger person, someone listening here, the first thing I would say to you is this. Everyone cannot be a model, but everyone can become a role model. Say that again. Everyone cannot be a model in the way the world says slim what figure cook but everyone can become a role model mm. i will tell you my charge and encourage you to start becoming a role model in your space if you don't have a platform the the ground you are standing is is your, your platform, is your, platform. Mm. your home is your first audience you don't need a pulpit everyone in your home is the audience before mm. You go on stage, and some of us will never go on stage. Your off-stage voice, your off-stage responsibility, your mm -hmm. off-stage faithfulness and stewardship is as powerful as on stage. Mm. You can role model amongst your siblings, amongst your friends. You can be the voice of conscience. You can be the one picking up the leader that no one will pick up. You can mm. be the one find the handouts for friends like I did. We didn't know. We are on a journey and we are not even there yet. But for everybody I bought the handout, advocacy didn't start today. So the first thing is to know that you may not be a model, but you can be a role model. The second thing I will say to you is start early and maximize my seasons. Mm. I'm a big believer in the power of restoration and the redemptive power that God is able to bring back lost opportunities. So if anyone is in the invisible stage, what they call the invisible woman syndrome, those over 50s who feel like I've lost time, nobody can see me, there is no need. I want to encourage you that there is still a need for you. But I want to speak to a group of people who are about to start as much as we believe in restoration and redemption of time, please don't waste time. Mm. There are certain customized opportunities that are very time sensitive. Yes. Yes. Under 20, under 30, there are certain fellowships and grants that are only available to a certain to age. age. While we believe God can use you as he will, while we believe opportunity can find you, just like it found the GF, um, KFC chicken, who started the colonel, yeah, Tasty Fried Chicken, who started in, in the 70s, yeah. and yes, Joyce Meyer started public ministry in our 50s. We believe all those. But if you are 19 or 18, mm. or 21, or 23, hear start. me with every love in my heart. Start now. And maximum, I move as if you were being chased by thunder. I'd rather that you catch your breath in your 30s and like, help! <sighs> because this, you have all the time, is good. So but there is, a, there is a truth that can be overstretched. It becomes a lie. 
That's the second thing. Start earlier, maximize seasons. And part of maximizing season is to seek out mentors. I have made a product of mentors, but even in the areas that I still have opportunity, opportunity is a word I use rather than challenge. I prefer that <laughs> word. In the areas I have opportunity, I see that there was a mentor gap. Mm. I will tell a story of how God led me to talk, walk to one of the most influential women of, in Africa to date. Okay. So I met her 21 years ago, and the Holy Spirit said, go introduce yourself to her and ask her that I told you to give her 5,000 every month. I say, he? This 5,000, miserable 5,000, I was earning 40,000. So that was mm. a big deal. I looked at who I was in comparison with what I thought she was. Mm. And I just said, hello, I missed out that opportunity. Wow. Now, fast forward 20 something years ago, she's now a mentor everyone wants. Because of it, I had to go reconnect with her in Dubai. But hear me, do you know what it would have meant to her 20 years Ooh. ago? When everyone was taking, 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 it would have yeah. validated the authenticity and the purity of my desire to connect. In a world that was taken from her as a CEO, this would have been a 20 something little year old little girl that said, Ma, I want to give you five thousand dollars. Well, she would have believed it. Mm. What would my life have been? I don't do regrets, but I'm telling this story for anyone who tells you, Relax, you have the old time. And if you're 20 something, please start and maximize season. That's the second thing I'll say to you. Then the third thing I'll say to you is this don't be so preoccupied with competition that you lose sight of completion. Mm. In fact, there's an affirmation in my book of affirmations, A Woman and Half, 100 affirmations for the woman who wants to be more and will not settle for less. I said, I am so focused on completion. I am intimidated by competition. Please mm. stay in your lane it is not a cliche, it is truth. Many of us are so focused on who is doing, who is not doing, that we have a littered many projects. If we finished one little thing well, then we can finish the next thing well. I published my first book in my 30s, but I started writing at the age of seven. Who knows what would have happened if I published at age nine or 10? Completion over competition. Completion over frustration. Complete it. That's why armed with what I saw that I didn't maximize, I'm now helping my children to make sure that they maximize seasons. My daughter mm. is publishing her first two books at the age of nine. Don't be focused, preoccupied, obsessed with competition. competition. Be focused and tunnel vision on completion. And the last thing I want to say to you, please love yourself. Mm -hmm. Love yourself. Love yourself enough to get up from abuse. Love mm -hmm. yourself enough to choose to be healed. Love yourself enough to maximize your voice. Love mm -hmm. yourself enough to invest in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit. Love yourself enough to choose or re-choose, diversify your friendships. Love yourself enough to travel. <laughs> yes. Some of you say, but travel is for the rich. No, it's only no. for the rich. The same money that I can use to do something else, I choose to travel because my worldview. Is Love yes. yourself enough to start again. Don't mm. stay stuck in the rut. You messed up. We all did mess up. We have stories of moving from one dysfunctional relationship to another. To another, to another. The second boy that we went to London to see mm. and we called and the voice there and what we picked up said, welcome to the Nottingham Correctional Center. I say, ah, I hear you. Correctional <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> Center. <laughs> You follow my God. Ah, oh, 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 ah, <laughs> welcome to the Nottingham. I say Chimo. <laughs> we all have stories. Oh my God. Exactly. Mm. Love yourself enough to say, you know what? While I'm not in competition with anyone, but I'm in competition with the old version of me. Mm. The old version of you. 
how can I make Eden heal the little better? Mm. What is there a more disciplined version of me? Is there a more creative version? You can see books. It's a library. That's it. I invest in knowledge because I love myself. Because I know the burden and the torture of ignorance. I'm called the sage because God allows me to bring uncommon wisdom. But it is also because of the many layers of an ignorant past. And I know the difference between light and darkness is knowledge. Love yourself. I'll pass it back to you. Oh my God. Honestly, I could sit here all night. Like you could see that even my body is saying, Ijiro, my touch light is, is dimming small, small, it's dimming. The light is already affecting my I see my eyes dimming. You can't see my eyeballs right now. Oh man. This, <laughs> this has been powerful. Ladies in the house who are still here, can you use one word to describe what this session has been for you? One word, go, 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 go for it. And as you type that one word, I need you to type again to say thank you, Coach Eden. Thank you, Miss Defunke. Thank you so much for pouring out from the depth of your soul. We appreciate you. We celebrate you. We right. thank you for living your truth, for living your dream, for using your voice for impact. I am an advocate for using our voices and telling our stories is part of using our voices because now that you've told your stories, even though you told them in packets, we can hear, we can see some of the ways that we relate with you, that you relate with us, that you have, you know, stumbled, fell, stood up, started to continue to run. And now we also know that we can do the same, that no matter how many times we fall, like you said, Ms. Defunke, success is continually standing up to continue the race. To say, no, I am not going to give up. And just like you said, Coach Eden, success is you understanding who you are, understanding your seasons. Your core. Your core. your core. That no matter what season you go through. And I, I just want to share because I just feel this bubble. No matter what is taken away from you, that core, nobody can take it. Mm. You can take motherhood or marriage or consultant or coach or author or advocate, but you see the person here, the encourager from whom everything flows. Please the know energizer. yourself. You must know yourself in such a way that nothing external just defines you. It's very important because the, the greatest source of identity crisis among younger people is because we find and define ourselves by external roles that we don't have full control over. So someone loses their job, they are like, I'm finished. Someone loses a spouse, in, in, someone walks out on you, they are like, I'm done. You know, uh, and it's a journey. It took me, um, you know, Ephesians, what's that word? That God will give me strength by his spirit in my inner man. I pray mm. that prayer every day for 12 years. When I tell people I used to be an emotional yo-yo, they will not believe. They call me strong woman. I said, I pray that prayer that mm -hmm. God by his spirit will give me strength in my inner man to the point where I yeah. know myself. When I lost my hair to chemo, lost part of my body, yes, through the seven or eight surgeries, darkened face, bleeding gums. You couldn't be a wife. How can you be a wife? You are, so, 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 you are trying to survive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wifing is not the problem. So those things were wonderful. But in that season of my life, it's not wife that was the pro issue. My kids were crawling all over their bed because I had twins that year. And the, bad, um, the, the doctor said, you cannot carry anything more than 10 pounds. And my mm. twins were more than 10 pounds. So they are crawling around your bed and I couldn't carry. So I couldn't even be a mother in the mm. right, in the way. I had to step out of work. So I couldn't be a consultant. Are you seeing where I'm going? So mm. every prop that we lean on was taken was away. Taken away. Was what strict. was left? The core, the encourager. I was still showing up in Facebook Live, teaching. People didn't know. It was later I announced that, hey, and people were, wait, 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 wait. So all the time you were posting in 2017, wait, eh? hmm. You know why? Because there is something in you, Defunke. There is something in you, EJ, and everyone listening that will catch the replay, that life cannot take, and that is your core. I remember, yeah. What you said just reminded me of um, when I I got pregnant of my twins as well. They are twelve years old. Ah, and, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want twins. 
<laughs> you will have it with that shoe. So, and um, I thought I had it all planned out, you know, but you have a mother that was strong and she was like, okay, don't worry. We have it sorted and all of that because it was pregnancy out of wedlock and um, I decided to keep them and all of that. And your backbone, which is my mother, now died three months to give him birth of the twins. Wow. And I just thought to myself, like, okay, it has happened, it has happened. Life happens, but it doesn't have to stop me. Mm. It doesn't have to stop me. I, that was I said that no matter the challenges, God will always ensure that you have something in you stronger than those things. The only problem we have is that we don't discover it. Yes. So the moment we don't discover it, we just believe that, oh, we wallow so much in self-pity, so much in self-condemnation, self-everything, external forces are talking, stigmatization here and there. Everybody is having a voice on your head. So you allow yourself to be buried into it without making a success out of the mess that you've come into, which is a failure, which is a temporary thing. So at that particular period, I was just have to leave everything and focus on making a success of out of being a mother mm. without no help. Be mm. stigmatized of getting pregnant out of wedlock in a family that is highly religious, mm. not having anybody to help me in caring for the children. I don't even know how to breastfeed children. I don't even know how to pack breast milk without, you know, I had to teach myself all that oh, using see. Google and YouTube yeah. in doing mothering. For twins, and I've never had the experience. But what I just know is that I take it one day at a time. Mm -hmm. One day at a time. Like when we wake up this morning, I you okay? Yeah, we are in money, we have 24 hours to handle whatever has to be handled that day. that day. Then we go on, then we have a success of that day. We sleep <laughs> again the following day, we have a success of that day. So it becomes a daily success story in my own motherhood. This is just one aspect of many in which you just have to understand who you are, how to tackle it, how to handle it without allowing external voices to wallow you down into accepting a mirror that is not you. They, they mirror themselves for you, but that is not you in the mirror. It is them in the mirror. Nobody can understand you except you. Mm. So if somebody is saying what they want you to hear, it's not what you have to hear because it is not you. They are saying it from their own perspective, from their own experiences, from their own cultural background, from their own lifestyle. That is not you. So you need to understand yourself. Like what Coach Eden said, if you don't love yourself, you are bound to fail. Loving yourself makes you to know who you are. Loving yourself makes you to shut down the external voices and be like, oh, this is me. I have every 100% right over what I decide in my life. If I fail, I fail. I will rise again. It mm. is me. I am going to give account of my life. You're not going to give account of your life for me. for me. Your own life is your own life. Your own name is your own name. I have my own identity. My own identity is peculiar with its own challenge, which is unique. Everybody Absolutely. comes with life with his own unique challenges. It will never be the same with another person. It can just be similar. Absolutely. Nobody has exact unique challenges. No. It can just be a similar one because nobody is you. You are mm. brought up in a different way. Your, your culture is different. Your exposure mm -hmm. is different. Your friends are different. So how do you want to now label yourself with what all other people see you as it? It is like you are doing yourself a great disservice. Mm. So yes, I really agree with that, that we should love ourselves if we ever want to have any success story. Mm. That is the foundation of it. Thank wow. you. Thank you so much, Mama Sai. <laughs> so grateful. You ladies, you just like blew our mind. Guys, I hope you're going to come back to watch this replay and watch and watch again. And for all of you who are here, I hope you will share this because more women 
need to watch this. They need to be reminded. They need to know that there is something on their inside. And especially the ones who have paid attention enough to hear those signs. Like Coach Larry would say, there is a Noah. And you know, it knows. It knows. We just need to pay attention. It's in your guts. It tells you. It gives you the sign. But most times... Like Coach Funke, I say Coach Funke, who knows? Like it, it gives, it's, it's, it, the noise takes it away from you. Your no one knows. So if you zone in and look within, you know exactly what you need to do. And it is calling you into deeper. It is calling you that you have more, that there is more to you than what you are right now. You just need to answer that call and know that no matter what happens, when you're stripped down, to nothing, your core knows what you carry, and it can always blossom again if you give it the permission to blossom. Thank you so much. I am so grateful. I feel so blessed. You're to welcome. You. Thank you so very much. God bless you. God bless Thank you. you. You're welcome. Love My you. Yeah. So we'll come your way again next month on her success story. You go be the success that you already are. Because I know God said when he created everything from day one to day six to day five, he said it was good. It was good. A morning and night came and it was good. A morning and night came and it was good. But on the sixth day when he created man, he said it is very good. You are very, very good. And that is equal to success. So you go be the success that you already are. Good night from here. Actually, good morning now. It's 12.30 a.m. Good <laughs> afternoon. <you> next month. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.